Globetrotters. Today we're going to be making Mom's Pot Pie. My mother was an incredible baker. She, she won many awards at our county fair for her breads and pies and cakes. She was also a very good cook, so when she put that all together, she made delicious pot pie for us for dinners. Her crusts were always light and flaky and so flavorful. Now we put a little bit of twist on it and today our pot pie will be made with vegan ingredients and whole grains. Okay, Rebecca, before we get started, what should they do? You should like, comment, and subscribe to our channel down here. Make sure your notification button is turned on so you never miss anything from Vegan Glow Truck. Okay, so our dough is in the refrigerator chili, now it's time to make the filling. We've got our one tablespoon of olive oil already heating up in our skillet. And to that we're going to add one medium onion all chopped up and ready to go. And then we'll add three cloves of garlic already minced up in the jar. I like to buy this in the jar. You can mince your own, of course. And fresh is always good, but this is pretty close to fresh, and it's much more convenient. Now, in this particular mixture, one teaspoon of, of the chopped uh, garlic is equal to one clove, so she's using three teaspoons. Next, we have a cup of celery chopped. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And then she's going to cook those down until the vegetables are softened. And we want our onion to be fairly translucent. That way it has a, a sweeter flavor, less of a sharpness to it. Cut. Okay, our onions and, and other vegetables are about done. So we're going to go ahead and make up our broth. First of all, let's, we've already measured out our broth powder, our celery salt, and our cornstarch all in together to make it easy to put together. We often measure ahead and that way when we go to assemble, everything's ready to go. So go ahead and put that in your large bowl. And to that, you're going to add the oat milk and the water. Now there's one cup of oat milk. And we've already pre-measured that and the two cups of water. All right, now you want to go ahead and get your whisk. And this might be the fun part. You get to make that a nice smooth mixture. Now, you can use flour in this, and flour works okay in the heat as it heats up. I like to use cornstarch for a couple of reasons. First of all, it has less overtones to it. it it's more of a, of a calm flavor. It just doesn't overtake everything like wheat flour can. And also, I think it gives us a little bit smoother texture, whereas sometimes the flour will clump up a little bit. If you get this mixed up right with a cold liquid, cornstarch has to be mixed in cold liquid first. If you get it mixed up in a cold liquid, it comes out with a right, nice smooth gravy. And as I'm sure my family will tell you, I kind of like thick gravies and cornstarch gives me that without a problem. Okay, now let's go ahead and put that in the skillet. Now we're going to add the gravy mixture to our skillet. And you'll notice at first it, it looks pretty liquidy. That's okay, That's, the cornstarch will do its thing in a minute. And then just mix that up a little bit. 
And then we're going to add our mixed vegetables, our potato, and for tonight's dinner, we're actually using tempeh. Tempeh is made from soy, much like what tofu is, but it has a nuttier flavor to it and a little more texture than, than normal tofu does. And because it's cultured, it actually is considered healthier for you than tofu, although tofu is good for you as well. Okay, go ahead and put in your vegetables. Go. And then get all this cooking together. Now it's going to look like a lot, but remember we have a large family. If you need to, you can cut this recipe in half, or what a lot of people do is choose to make it in the double, in the, in the regular recipe like this, but double it, but consider it double and put half away for another time. That way you have two meals, you don't have to cook a second time. Now, these vegetables were frozen, they were measured out, but vegetables will refreeze when they sit there in the glass like that. So we'll go ahead and put the potatoes in. And mix that all up good. Make sure they all get coated in the gravy. Just imagine this in your pot pie. It's already looking delicious. Now we want to add the tempeh in next. And again, you can use tofu, you can use Satan, uh, you can even use um, beans if you wanted. Anything for a little extra protein. Some of the vegetables do have protein. But we like to add a little bit extra, and it also gives it more of a chewy texture than just the vegetables themselves. Now we're going to let that simmer for about five, maybe ten minutes until that sauce thickens, but you need to keep stirring during that time so it doesn't stick and to make sure that it, it comes together with a smooth gravy. You don't want clumps. Becca has that thickened up. Let's see how it's still in the middle. Don't turn it on yet. Up. It. You'll notice it's getting thicker, and we want to see that, but with cornstarch, it's also going to turn a darker color when it gets to a nice thick gravy point, and it's starting to get there. You can see in the middle, when it starts to bubble up a little bit, it's a little darker colored. That's what we're looking for. And it'll thicken up even more when it bakes in the oven. This is probably a good point to explain too that while we use the frozen mixed vegetables, you can use the equivalent amount of any vegetable, fresh or frozen. I know some people like broccoli and cauliflower in theirs. We do that sometimes. Uh, you can even use zucchini or yellow squash, whatever vegetables. Just make sure the pieces are small enough that they cook up evenly with the rest of your food. The frozen mixed vegetables is just a quick way to, to ensure that you get all your vegetables in there without too much of the extra hassle. And sometimes we want a quick meal. Alright, I think we're starting to darken finally. 
does seem like it takes forever sometimes, but really this goes fairly quickly, which is why you need to keep stirring it. You'll see we're starting to get more color, less white to the gravy. We can probably safely cover that, turn off our heat, and let's get on to rolling out. See how the color is completely changed, even though it was sitting on a cold, well, not cold, but not on burner. It's turned off. And we're ready to put it in our pie crust. Rebecca has already put her pie crust in the bowls. The bottom crust is in. The top crust isn't done yet. But we're going to go ahead and dish that in. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, let's put the filling in. She has one cup in this one. I think it might take about a cup and a half, but we might actually be able to do two cups in each. We'll see. Yeah, two cups looks about right. Okay, well, let's put two cups in the other one. Now for tonight, we're just doing one for Rebecca and one for Abby. And then we'll put the other ones together. Uh, we may even try a biscuit topping tomorrow night. We've done that sometimes. Or shepherd's pie where we put the mashed potatoes on top. But for tonight we're going to do these the way that Abby and Rebecca want. That one looks like you might be able to even put a little bit more in it. Go ahead and top them off because that's the, those are the essential nutrients. That looks really good. It smells good, okay. too. Okay. Okay, the pies, these two pies are all ready to go in the oven now. She has the top crust on. We've cut slits in the top to let the steam escape. And they're ready to pop in the oven. We'll be back in a, about 20 minutes since they're a smaller dish and see how they look. 